So you join me here today, quite a sunny day, and I give try and give back something back to the to the community of online problem solvers. I uh, had an SRS fault, so I decided um, to consult the old YouTube and Google, and I found a solution. But I didn't feel, find a video for it. So this this video here is just to give something back and uh, tell everyone how how I fixed it. It was actually a guy in Singapore they'd left a blog post somewhere which explained how to do it and that was how I managed to fix it. So I'll show you on a video and they explained a bit more. So turn on the car. This is a uh, Mercedes B-Class. It's a uh, 2010 year UK spec. So I am on the right hand side. On the, on the UK spec cars, the battery compartment is underneath the driver's side. I think the um, European cars or American cars would have it on the passenger side, but the, the um, the battery is always on the right hand side of the cars. So you can see the SRS fault, which is your main your main problem here. If I turn on the car, I think we see the next issue. So the passenger airbag light is active. The other thing to note, no windscreen wipers working, which is the real problem as well. If we just look here, we've also got a vanity light not working. And another SOS shot there. So, first thing to debug is the uh, First thing you should always do with this sort of thing is check your fuses. You've probably done that. You might have seen I've got a dash cam fitted, so that was a self-installed job. So I guess the first thing you'd want to do is rule out your own your own uh, mistakes of your own wiring and stuff. But um, second step, let's check the fuses. So UK spec car, right hand side, underneath. It's going to be where you're going to find your, your battery. So quick open this. That comes out quite easily. Uh, as I say, I've done some wiring myself, so rule out that if you need to. Otherwise, we take a look at the fuse diagram, which is more fiddly to get out than it probably should, but it's always good that it's in there. Let's do that. Here are useful diagram. Here's all the fuses, where they are and stuff. You could have a look down the list. If you haven't got one of these bits of paper, they're always on your line. You can usually find them quite easily. So you might look at, uh, where is it? So the wipers were the thing that were getting me into trouble in the rain. Um, wipers, front 36 and 30, uh, 39 and 69. So we can look them up here. Uh, 39, 69. That's one of the ones. This one would be 69. I did all of that. I checked those, they're all fine. Um, online, people have said that, that there's no power being delivered to this uh, Fuse 69. So, yeah, a bit of extra debug you could do if you want. But online, I consulted the, uh, the interweb, internet. And uh, this diagram alludes to the relays. There's some extra fuses underneath the relays if you have a taxi, for example. And it's uh, fuse B that we need to look at. Annoyingly, the uh, the relays are well hidden, 
and on this UK spec car it's on the left hand side in the passenger side. So on this UK spec car the SAM containing the relay is just here behind this um, mat and behind the uh, insulating foam. So what we've got to do is get the uh, mat and the insulating foam out. Uh, the mat's easy, the foam's a bit more tricky. Um, we don't have to take the side panel off here, um, but first we don't have to take this um, glove box um, plastic shelf out. Uh, that's held in by two uh, Torx screws. They're at an angle, um, so they're quite fiddly to get to. Um, it's not straight up, it's more of an angle forward, so uh, let's remove those. There's a scuff plate here, um, which is holding down this uh, plastic um, edging, so we may have to take that out. I think the, the, the proper way to do it, if you're going to do the full job, is to take the whole um, section of foam out, but that does require you probably to remove the seats. But for now I'm just going to peel back the carpet and push the seats back. So the first stage, take this panel off, there's some retaining clips, uh, two of them, just in here and here. So with that out, this should be able to come out. Here we go. So then you are, you're going to need to remove this uh, uh, wire that's attached to the light. It's just clip out. It's going to be a bit tricky to put back in, I think. But see some of my um, self wiring there. Ignore that. Uh, in here we have the top of the SAM just here, this uh, this unit with the barcode, lots of wires. <clears throat> so the side panel comes out quite easily but it is held in place here. Bit of fiddling, it should pop out. We'll be needing that later. So this carpet is attached to some uh, polystyrene and it's quite rigid possibly with a metal frame inside. As I said, the whole job would be to take out the whole part here, but it's um, held in around the foot legs of the chair. So I don't know if that means you have to take the whole chair out if you're doing it properly. But for this task, what we're gonna do, I just peeled it back. You can see in there, it was stuck to the um, polystyrene, very rigid. Um, it looks quite flimsy, but it's actually more rigid. So now we have the SAM unit, and we've got the relays. You can see them here, they're all color coded. The one we're going to change is B, which is this one. So we need to get this. Um, Try to hold this. So this uh, very nice uh, sort of plastic holder, which is blocking our access to the to the relay, is held on on the side. I most just pop it off. It is possibly one of the more frustrating parts to get to, but we should be able to just clip, unclip it on the left side. Really tricky. What I did, I got my thumb under this, this part here and just pulled it back. And it, we can leave it out there and we can get to faulty relay, which is B on this model. That's here. Just wiggling. Get that out. Yeah, 
definitely keep a tight hold, you don't want to drop it down there to make the job much bigger. <coughs> so here we are, this is the relay. I'll put the, the model numbers in the description. So this is the relay I removed. Um, you can you can break them open quite easily, and then you can see how it works. Diagrams are online as well. You can find them quite easily. Um, in this case, what's happened is the um, the coil seems to have burnt out or disconnected. Um, there's no there's no um, there's no uh, electrical connection through through the coil, so the switch seems to be never never switching on when when this failed for me what I noticed was the um, the wipers failed for maybe a couple of minutes and then they started working again a few days later failed again never came back so it was sort of a slow failure so these cost about um, I saw them for about seven dollars in the US um, don't know what the Singaporean uh, exchange rate was but I get online eBay sort of suggesting seven eight quid mark in the UK I went for the uh, Mercedes-Benz garage option because I was going there anyway and I got 15 pounds 15 pounds 72 which was expensive but they had it in stock and it comes in a nice Mercedes box so it's a branded part, so you, can't, you have to make your own mind up whether it was worth it. But for me, getting a job done on that day was 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 definitely worth it. So, fifteen seventy two, well spent, and a lot cheaper than getting them to debug it and uh, change it. Probably costing a couple of hundred for that. Okay, so obviously fitting it, it's the reverse of what we did to take them out. We're gonna peel back the the car the carpet. There's only one way that they fit in. So a quick check. It's gonna be this way. Is it this way? Yeah. So I'll make sure we don't drop it obviously, because that's gonna really screw up the job. Push it in. Safely in. I'm gonna put this get back. Oh, shit, that's sure that good. All the wiring's okay. Let's push back the, the carpet. It is a bit loose, um, but once you put all the extra panels and uh, bits back on, it uh, you, you're not not gonna notice it. Certainly, it's not gonna give you any sleepless nights. So uh, side panel back on first. Don't have to get that under the the uh, scuff scuff bar. And then uh, mustn't forget to reconnect the light for the glove box underneath or the the footwell rather. And then put this panel back in with the two screws. So before we do all the refitting of all the uh, side panels and stuff, you probably want to check that you actually fit, fixed it. So, just turn on the car. There's no warning. I should give you a word of warning. <coughs> if you already... If you already had the SOS fault come up, then you do need to clear that from the uh, log, just pushing your um, your button to clear the messages. Otherwise, even though you replace the um, relay, you're going to see the same fault message, which is very demoralising and possibly a heart attack on a plate for you. So I switched it on. Passenger uh, airbag lights not on. No SOS fault. No SOS light. We can use the wipers again, very useful. And we check the vanity mirror, 
Uh, why isn't that working? I can't remember that. Oh, that one's working. And that one's working. Cool. So, that's an all good job. So next stage, fit it all back together. Job done. So, I'll put the side, side plate back on. Clipped in the scuff plate. And then I'll put this back in. Remember what I said? Don't forget to do your the light under the glove box, which is fiddly. And then we've got to line up these here with the with the holes there and there. A bit of pushing because I'm moving up quiet. Next job, put the torque screws back in. There you go, everything back. You're never going to know what's gone on behind that. Hopefully it's going to last us a good few years before we have to go back again. So we're all done. Let's have another check. SOS light's gone out, no warning, passenger light. Vanity mirrors gonna work, yep, that one's working. That one's not working, not sure why. But the wipers are working. Hmm. Have to figure that one out another day. <coughs> So quite a nice day, maybe a day for a drive. Hope you like this video, hope you got something from it, hope it explained on how to fix your problem. I would say don't don't forget to subscribe and like. Um, I don't post many videos though, so you probably won't get interrupted much. But if you want to like, it would be appreciated. Otherwise, good luck, hope it goes well. Have fun, cheers, bye.